he heard a knock at the door and he opened it. Who's there? And standing there in the pouring rain was an old lady. Oh dearie. Covered in quite a lot of seaweed. Aimed, drew it back and loosed it towards the demon. And the wooden spoon. What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, Across the moor. That's the end of the story. Hi hey folks, Tom Fan Dabby Dozy. Thanks for tuning in. So, if you're new to the channel, I like to make videos about a bunch of different topics, but mainly wilderness survival skills and martial arts, often from a historical perspective. Now, I generally like to look at the practical side of things, the nuts and bolts of how people met their everyday survival needs. But once in a while, I like to look at the mythology and the cultural side for no other reason than it's interesting. And the more time you spend dressing and thinking about how our ancestors survived, you also can't help but wonder how they saw their everyday reality. Another reason why I like talking about myths and legends is it just adds another layer of interest to the landscape. Rather than just seeing the land as a bunch of resources or obstacles that are going to help or hinder us, when you learn about the stories, it just brings another sort of depth and magic to the place. Furthermore, sometimes the stories are even embedded in the place names. You know, the names of the mountains, the forests, or the rivers. And it just brings everything to life. Also, who doesn't like a good story? So I've got some past videos talking about myths and legends, which you can check out after if you're interested. But in this video, I'm going to tell you two of some of my favourite stories that include some mythological shape-shifting creatures. So grab yourself a hot brew or a drink, sit back, relax, and let the story begin. Now our first story is set by the coast. So follow me and we'll find a nice comfy place to sit by the sea. Now before I get into the story, I first want to say a huge thanks to my patrons for supporting the channel and also suggesting I do another video on Celtic myths and legends. Basically, on the Patreon page, you can just donate wherever you can afford and there you get access to monthly extra content. I do things like behind the scenes and Q&A videos. You can suggest what you want to see in the next video. You also get early access to things like merchandise, my handmade crafts and sometimes early viewings on the videos I make. So if you're interested in that and you want to support me making these videos then click that link to the Patreon page and um, yeah it'd be great to have you join the community. So the first story I'm going to tell you is about a Scottish mythological creature known as a selkie which is basically a shape-shifting seal, a being that is mainly lives as a seal in the ocean but can also shape-shift into a human. Now for centuries the majority of the highland population was situated here in the west coast of Scotland to make use of the bountiful resources that the ocean provides. Now for centuries people used to hunt seals for food, for blubber and for their hides, for their skins. I guess they also competed with the seals for the fishing resources. But the myths and legends about selkies also show that people also respected and had their, their superstitions about the animals. Now there's literally hundreds of stories about selkies dotted all around Scotland. But I'm just going to tell you one that I can remember and uh, yeah, sit back, relax and enjoy. Our story begins here on the west coast of Scotland with a young fisherman called Donald. Now Donald had always been a fisherman, so had his father and so had his father before that. And he would spend his days either stretching out gill nets across bays with rivers to try and catch salmon or by taking purse nets out on little wooden boats to try catch herring. And that's how he made his living. Now he fell in love with a local lassie, got married to her, and they built a house situated a wee bit away from the village. There they had a beautiful baby daughter called Mary. And for a few years, life, life was great. Donald was going out, and almost every time he was catching lots of fish and selling them in the market. And just times were good and his daughter was growing up nice, fit and healthy. But unfortunately one day Donald's wife grew sick and died 
leaving him alone to raise his daughter. Now this tragedy started to turn everything a little bit the worse for Donald. Suddenly he wasn't catching as much fish, he wasn't making as much money in the market and he was finding it really difficult to try look after and raise his daughter. He was finding it difficult to find people to look after his daughter when he was out fishing. And this carried on for, for several months, he just, Donald had no luck. And one day he was out fishing and he was pulling in his nets and it felt really heavy and he thought, oh, finally, I've got a good catch, okay? And my luck has changed. And as he hauled up his nets, hauled it into the boat, what he saw was not a big catch of fish, but was a tangled up baby seal. Now this seal had shredded and torn and created a lot of damage in his nets, which, you know, was his livelihood. They're really expensive. So he was furious at the seal. So in his anger, he picked up an oar and beat the seal to death, beat it bloody, untangled it from the net and chucked its carcass back into the sea. Then furious as anything, he just pulled in his nets and went back to shore, went back home. And a few days later, as he was repairing his nets and there was a, a big storm raging outside, he heard a knock at the door. It's so strange, who's here at this time in the middle of the storm? And as he opened the door, to his surprise, was a beautiful woman, almost completely naked, other than being covered in quite a lot of seaweed. So, as you would be expect, he was a bit surprised, but because there was a storm raging outside, he let her in, and he gave her a place by the hearth, he gave her some clothes, and he gave her some, some porridge and a hot drink. Now, this woman, although she was very beautiful, she was quite strange. She didn't really talk much, when she did, her voice was quite strange, but he was happy to have the company and she seemed to get on really well with his daughter. So he was happy to have her. Now he let her stay for a few days and these few days turned into a few weeks, which turned into a few months. And over the time, the, the woman started to become a bit more normal, a bit more talkative. And to be honest, Donald was starting to fall in love with her. He really enjoyed her company and he was happy that he finally had someone that could look after his daughter when he was away fishing. Now with the arrival of this woman, times started to change for the better for Donald. Again, he was starting to catch more fish, he was starting to get more luck at the market, and maybe life was going to be good again with this new woman. But one day, returning from a fishing trip, he got back home to his cottage, and no one was there. Everyone had gone, which is strange. Now he went down to the village, and asked anyone if they'd seen the woman and his daughter and a local man had said yeah I'm pretty sure I saw them down by the sandy beach. So Donald headed down to the beach and to his surprise he, he saw the woman holding his daughter's hand and very slowly wading into the water, very slowly getting deeper and deeper as the water was getting closer and closer to his daughter's neck. And Donald was a bit alarmed by this and he ran down and he shouted and he said, Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the woman turned to him and said, You took my daughter. Now I'm taking yours. And she plunged into the ocean, taking his daughter with her, never to be seen again. That's the end of the story. Now lots of Selkie stories I've got that similar theme of being quite vengeful. Now I'm going to tell you another story about another Scottish mythological shape-shifting creature. But this being doesn't live in the ocean, but instead prefers fresh water. So follow me inland as I hike up to some ruined shielings next to a haunted lochan, and I'll tell you another wee story. So I've just hiked a few kilometers inland uphill from the coast 
to the site of some ruined shielings to tell my next story, which is titled The Shieling of the Haunted Lochan. Now, before I get into the story, first off, what is a shieling, you might be asking? Well, simply put, a shieling is basically a summer dwelling, a really simple cottage or shelter that people lived in during the summer months as they were looking after the cattle when they were on their summer grazing. The walls were typically made of stone and or turf with a basic thatched roof. And I hope to build a replica one of these in the future, so don't forget to subscribe and uh, yeah, tune in for that. Now, the shieling system was basically part of a rotational agricultural practice that was practiced in the highlands for centuries, potentially even thousands of years. Basically, around the 1st of May in the celebration of Beltane, people would drive their cattle away from their main settlements down in the valleys up to the higher ground in the summer pastures. And there, the, most of the women and children would live in shielings for most of the summer and look after the cows. There they would milk them and make butter and cheese. Meanwhile, the majority of the men would stay down in the main settlements in the glens and they would till the land and grow the oats and the barley, the main crops. Then once the summer had ended and the harvest was in, people would drive the cows back off the hill, back down to the lower glens and stay back in the main dwellings around the celebration of Samhain. So that's what a shieling is. And you can find ruined shielings dotted all around the highlands. Sometimes they're marked on the map as shieling or Addy. Uh, but in the case of this, this wasn't marked on the map. I just stumbled across this last year on a fishing trip. And this particular one is in really good condition. You can still see the, the door mantle, the shape of the, the door. It's also got a, what looks like a built-in shelf, which is really nice. I've never seen that before. So I thought, perfect little location to tell my next story. So my next story includes a different Scottish mythological creature known as a Kelpie, which is basically a shape-shifting water horse that lives in rivers and lochs. It kind of looks like a horse, but it's usually got webbed feet and fangs and is black and pretty nasty looking. Now, depending on the story, it tends to shape-shift into different forms. It can either shift into a handsome man or a beautiful woman or an old lady or sometimes it just changes into a regular looking horse and the general themes of a lot of myths about kelpies is it's generally either trying to prey on people or it's trying to catch them and bring it back to their home of the river and loch and drown them so that's the the general themes that you see in um, kelpie stories around scotland so this particular story of a kelpie I believe is from the Isle of Lewis, which is an island off the northwest coast of Scotland. And it begins with a chieftain, chieftain of a village who had two daughters. And for all of the daughters' lives, for as long as they could remember, every summer they went to the same old shieling site. And it was a perfectly nice location, but they were getting a bit bored of it. And as they got older, they started to question their dad, why did they go back to the same place? And they realized that there was actually a, a perfectly good other shieling location just a few miles from the village that had lots of green grass, that had lots of building material, and it was next to a lovely lochin. And they asked their father, oh, why can't we go there? That looks like a perfect shieling location. And the father was adamant, we're not going there. That lochin is haunted. And the daughters thought that was absolute nonsense. But the father was insistent. And another year passed and they went to the same old shieling site, did the same old boring things in the, in the exact same place. <clears throat> the next year passed and they pleaded with him again, please dad, can we please go to that other shieling site? And the dad was like, nope, nope, we always go to the same place, we can't go to the other shieling site. So another year passed. Eventually, you know, the, the daughters are growing up, they're pretty much young women now, taking on more responsibilities. Next year passes and they plead with the dad again. They plead with the chieftain and they're like, Dad, can we please, please go somewhere else? Can we please go up to that lock and can we please try it out? Finally, the father gives in and he's like, you know what? Fine, you're, you're adults now. You can make up your own decision. You can take the cows to that shielding site, but don't say I didn't warn you. So the daughters were very happy about this, very excited to go to a new place. They rounded up the cattle they packed up their butter churns and their buckets and their extra blankets and they drove the cattle to the new shieling site. There they collected stones and made a, 
a ring foundation of stones. They cut little squares of turf to put in between the stones and made a lovely wall. They then collected timber and things from local trees and made some a roof frame and thatched it with some heather. And within a few weeks, they made themselves a really lovely little shealing hut. And there they spent the summer and they loved it. The grass was green, the cows are getting all fat, they were making lots of butter, making lots of cheese, and they're in this exciting new location with a different view and different sights to see. Everything was fine, everything was great, it was a lovely summer. But one night, one dark and stormy night, as it's always seems to be a dark and stormy night, they heard a knock on their shielding door. And they opened it. Who's there? And standing there in the pouring rain was an old lady. Oh dearie, put your heart is in place. And one of the daughters thought, what are you doing out here in the middle of the moor? Come on, come on, come in, welcome. Get out the storm. And they welcomed in the old lady and they sat her by next to the warm fire. And they served her a bowl of porridge because she must be hungry. And not only did the old lady proceed in slurping down the entire bowl of porridge, but she also ate the wooden bowl and the wooden spoon. Well, this kind of surprised the daughters, but they just thought, well, well, maybe she was hungry. She's been out in the cold for a while. It was getting late, so they said to the old lady, oh, you must be tired. Please lie in our bed, lie in between us, the warmest spot, and rest yourself, you know, sleep easy. So they all went to bed, the old lady in the middle, two daughters either side, and they went to sleep. Now, later on in the night, when it was pitch black, one of the daughters woke up with a warm, wet sensation on the side of her body. So, to see what was going on, she struck a flint, lit a rush lamp, looked over, and the warm, wet sensation turned out to be her sister's blood. And the nice old lady had turned into a kelpie, this black, horse-like, creature with fangs and was eating her sister's head. So, as you can imagine, she screamed and she ran as fast as she could out the shielding and started to run as fast as she possibly could back towards the village. The Kelpie saw her and ran out the shielding and started chasing her on all fours. This kind of half old lady, half black horse thing running after her. And back at the village, the chieftain, the father of the daughters, woke with a feeling that Something just wasn't right, and in the distance, he could hear his daughter screaming. So, he jumped to his feet and grabbed his longbow and ran to the outskirts of the village. And there, at the edge of the village, he could see in the distance one of his daughters running for her life with this horrible black horse demon chasing her across the moor. So, he knocked an arrow in his bow, aimed, threw it back, and loosed it towards the demon. The arrow hit the kelpie in the arm, and one of the arms flew off and landed on the ground and turned into a hill. The kelpie wasn't put off though, and continued to chase the daughter just with three legs. Just like this, chasing the daughter and it was getting closer and closer. So the chieftain knocked another arrow in his bow, aimed, drew it back, and loosed it again towards the kelpie. This time, the arrow hits the kelpie in the leg, and one of the legs falls off lands in the in the moor and also turns into a hill. Don't ask me how, but it did. And after this, the kelpie with just one arm and one leg tried its best to get closer and closer to the daughter, but eventually gave up and hobbled back all the way back and slipped silently into the lochin. So, that's my favourite story about a kelpie. There's a couple of stories for you. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to hear some more Celtic mythology stories, then check out some of my past videos on the subject that I'll link below. If you want monthly extra content and also help support the channel, then don't forget to check out my Patreon page and become a patron. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll be back with another video next month. And in the meantime, don't piss off any seals, and uh, stay away from haunted lockins. Catch you later.